how Kobe Bryant never ended up with the Boston Celtics. As we all know, Kobe Bryant is incredible. Five NBA championships, a league MVP. He recently had not one, but two jerseys retired in the NBA. But in my opinion, one of his greatest achievements is the fact that he's a one-team player, which is something that we rarely see with players in the NBA today. He was a member of the Lakers for 20 seasons, and Magic Johnson himself called him the greatest Laker of all time, which is a big statement, but he definitely has a case. But what's crazy is the fact that he almost ended up playing for the arch rivals of the Lakers. He almost ended up playing for the Boston Celtics in the draft of the 1996 NBA season. Before I start, the full article is linked down below in the description box if you want to have a read. In 1996, ML Carr served as both head coach and executive vice president slash director of basketball operations for the Boston Celtics. And while the Celtics were in good hands heading into the 1996 NBA draft, he did need some help in making a decision on who to draft. By this time, Red Arback had become the team's president, and whilst not every decision meant a visit to Arback's office, this wasn't just any decision. Plus, let's be honest, who wouldn't come to Arback for advice, especially draft advice? He flees St. Louis in 1956 to obtain the draft rights to Bill Russell, he snatched John Havlicek with the last pick in the first round in 1962, he drafted Larry Bird as a junior eligible player in 1978, and completed another lopsided swap that gained the Celtics Robert Parrish and Kevin McHale in 1980. He also managed to draft Len Bias, the second overall pick, after winning an NBA championship in the same year. So yeah, look, not a bad guy to go to advice for. When Carr asked for his advice about the prospects, the Celtics were considering with their first round pick in 1996, well, there was a kid, and this one kid, named Kobe Bryant. Heading into pre-draft workouts, Kobe had wowed the Celtics, but they were also amazed with his off-court ability, as in a sit-down interview, Carr said it was the best he had ever seen. Arback wasn't at the camp, but he had seen footage, and he said, and I quote, there was nothing the kid couldn't do. So at this point, Kobe to the Celtics is a strong possibility. The only risk was the fact that Kobe was making the leap straight out of high school to the NBA, which was reasonably new, but whilst it was new, it had been done before. With the Timberwolves taking Garnett out of high school the year before, of course Moses Malone and Daryl Dawkins had in the 70s, but in recent NBA history, it was only really KG, and looking back at this, it's typically only big men who get drafted out of high school due to being more NBA ready than guards. Well, as though it seemed. Arback said, and I quote, I think this kid is going to be a hell of a player, but it can go either way. He seems to be solid, but he's a high school kid. You've got to make a choice based on what you need today, but I think he's a hell of a player. Keep in mind at this point, Kobe is an avid Laker fan. Growing up in Italy, his grandparents had to send him VHS tapes to watch as he couldn't even watch games live. He would watch the Lakers Celtics finals from the 1980s and despite being a huge Laker fan, when he worked out with Boston at 17 years old, he said working out with Dennis Johnson was the coolest thing in the world. In addition, when they brought out the practice gear, he reflects on it saying, I'm looking at it like, do I really have to put this on? I'm comfortable wearing the shit I have right now. But I quickly move past that, man. It's like, I'm quickly about to become a professional. If anything, I understand the history of this franchise, and this franchise has done a lot of amazing stuff. So I was quickly able to move by that. As you can imagine, the workout was incredible for Kobe. Here are some of the quotes from the staff in Boston. I tell you, he put on a shooting exhibition, the way he stroked the ball, Carr remembers, it was unbelievable. He did it in flying colours. Another quote was, if you closed your eyes and thought a little bit, you might have thought you were watching Michael Jordan, says then Celtics manager Jan Volk. He did everything well, beyond well. He was exceptional in everything that he did. And then we commented, as I recall, on how reminiscent he was of Michael. So yeah, I mean, nothing we haven't heard before, but this is a 17-year-old kid we're talking about here. Not Kobe we know today, this is 17-year-old Kobe, and you need to keep that in mind. As for the interview, Carr said, he was the best interview that I've ever been a part of. Kobe knew the league as well as anyone, he knew the Celtics from a historical standpoint, he knew the Celtics probably better than most Celtics did at 17 years old, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Quite frankly, some of this stuff I didn't even know. He said all the right things. He sounded like a Celtic. 
which is pretty crazy, but from a young age, it was evident that Kobe was just an avid fan of the game, far more than most humans on the planet. Even if he saw the Celtics as the rivals to his beloved Lakers, which Carr said at the time the Celtics had no idea whatsoever, which was stated later on as Carr said deep down, Bryant was a diehard Laker fan, but the Celtics say they weren't aware of it at the time, nor did Bryant relay that fact to them at any point. So what happened? How is it that after all this, and all the praise given to Kobe Bryant, all the quotes, everything, how did they not draft him? Well, in 1996, there were six prospects that were so-called must-draft players. They were known by all scouts and teams as the main guys to be drafted, and even acquired a name by the media. They were called the Super Six of 96, as they came to be known Allen Iverson, Marcus Camby, Sharif Abdul-Rahim, Stefan Marbury, Ray Allen, and Antoine Walker. No matter what, if the Celtics could get into the top six, they were gonna do it. Evident by the statement, we didn't care which one of the six fell to us, meaning a little hype by the media, probably helped the Celtics from drafting one of them over the young 17 year old kid they saw tons of potential in. And at the time, Boston had the ninth overall pick, but managed to sneak into the Super 6 of 96 list and cut a deal to move up to the 6th overall pick guaranteeing one of those players, which was arguably a safer option at the time, as they took Walker 6th overall. But years later, it was one of their biggest regrets as a franchise. But at that time, it had been said, if college players were one step away from the NBA, high school players were two steps away, which meant having a project further down the road what a player might become. Which would have been hard for the Celtics, but ultimately a regret they would remember forever. Nevertheless, as we all know, the outcome, Carr chose Walker, 6 foot 8, who certainly had the talent to lead an NBA team. I mean, in 8 seasons in Boston, Walker averaged 20.6 points, 8.7 rebounds, 4 assists, he became an all-star in his second season in the NBA, and twice more with the Celtics. He also helped the Celtics reach the playoffs, including the 2002 Eastern Conference Finals, so a very decent player, but to be honest with you... Yeah, a little unfortunate as he was not the Black Mamba, who was drafted by the Hornets and as we all know, they dealt him to the Lakers in exchange for Vlade Divac, a move that is now considered a genius move by former Lakers general manager, Jerry West. Which another awesome fact is that leading up to the draft, Carr said he had several conversations with West, but had no idea that West had any interest in Kobe. That's why he's such a great general manager, Carr says. He wasn't going to give that away. Another awesome fact is Kobe could have actually gone number one that year. Not a high chance, but a chance nevertheless, as at the end of Kobe's pre-draft workout in Philadelphia, then 76ers assistant coach Maurice Cheeks asked Bryant to run from baseline to baseline while Cheeks timed him. Bryant recorded an excellent time, but then Cheeks told Kobe that Iverson had run it a bit faster. When Kobe reflected back on this incident, he said, being the bullheaded kid I was, I was like, what the fuck does this have to do with playing basketball? Which, as you can imagine, slightly ruined his chances of going to Philly even more. The 76ers held the top overall pick and eventually used it on Iverson. As for Philadelphia and Boston fans, this one hurts. Carr recalls the meeting when the Celtics decided not to pick Bryant. We all looked at each other, Carr says, we all knew there was a possibility that Kobe could come back and haunt us. And did he ever? Five NBA championships overall, a 2010 championship against the Boston Celtics, and he played for their arch rivals, which he claimed is the sweetest, because it was the hardest. So as we all know, Kobe Bryant really hurt the Celtics, but he also hurt the Philly fans. I'm sure you remember Bryant also beat Iverson and the 76ers in 2001. Those two finals are amongst Bryant's proudest achievements. So I'll leave you with this, Boston fans. What do you think would have happened had you drafted Kobe in 1996? You were that close. Another historic player to that historic team? That would have been insane. Kobe says, I would have tried to carry on Bird's legacy. Absolutely, I would have done it with a tremendous amount of pride and honor. But as we all know, he ended up playing for the Lakers and carried on Magic Johnson's legacy. And Magic called him the greatest Laker of all time.
With that being said, let me know if you want to see a what if video on this scenario. I think it would be a pretty awesome video, but I want to know what you guys think down below. So let me know in the comment section. If you do, drop a like and comment down below if you truly want to watch a what if video on this scenario. I'll look at the likes and look at the comments and see if you guys want this video. I'm not sure if you will, but let me know. If you're new right here, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to watch more videos just like this one. And whilst you do that, be sure to hit that notification bell next to my name so you don't miss a video. Hit that like button if you want to watch the What If video. I'm out. Peace.